Brett in St. Louis, Missouri. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com, but please call me Mo. And I get to cut uh, really cool lenses for a really cool frame. This is the Oakley Chamber, the model number 8138, the 53 eye size in the color 05 Universe Blue. And I'm cutting Transitions Extra Active Green Lenses in the Invisible Bifocal. Um, let's start over. Take two, Invisible Bifocal with Transitions Extra Active Gray with the Blue Flash Mirror. And sadly, Brett was our guinea pig. I, he originally wanted Transitions Extra Active Green with a green mirror. But there are three colors of Extra Active. There's gray, brown, and green. There has always been gray, and then brown came onto the scene a few years back, and then most recently, I shouldn't say there's always been gray. First there was gray, then there was brown. Green came along. Green is made in one lab. Gray and brown can be gotten from other labs. However, now that there are the six style mirrors, which come in silver, gold, blue, green, red, and pink, they are applied at the labs where they can do the gray and the brown. Green is still on an island. And so, as of now, we cannot get any of these six colors. Let's move those out of the way. These six colors with the green. Hopefully one day it'll happen. But for now, you can just get these six colors with the gray and the brown. Now, that's in the extra active. There are new colors of these style colors for the regular transition signature seven colors you can get them in of course there was always gray brown and green but now you can do a sapphire and amethyst and amber and emerald but today we're going to focus on these yeah <laughs> so let me begin um oh yeah the frame the frame so we're going to take it out of the box the original packaging so yeah brett sorry about that sorry you had to be the guinea pig the learning experiment but i did not know now i do that's what i found out of course all that's going to change but so inside, the nice thing about this frame, it comes with different, you can change out the nose pads. And I think probably I'm going to have to do a video on that one day for the people who get that. But there might be some videos out there. Of course, it comes with a Oakley cleaning cloth slash carrying bag. So you don't have to carry the hard case around you if you want to carry it around in this bag that doubles as a cleaning cloth. And of course, I took off the little sleeve. Yes, that's a cleaning cloth little sleeve that comes on there to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping and I'm going to include that when I ship to you but again this is the Oakley 8138 the chamber color 05 universe blue in the 53 eye size so really cool frame dark blue frame slightly different color blue on the temples here with the little white Oakley logo of course the rubber temple tips and this is the chamber chamber <laughs> so same color that i'm well almost the same color i'll show you my universe blue in just a moment but in the meantime let's go ahead and pop out the demo lenses and get started because he has been waiting for these things so let's get them on his face i'm gonna pop out the original demo lenses put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker i'm going to barcode the sticker you are secret agent 1306 or as i like to say volume or series 1306 in my 250 million part series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in america so stay stay tuned for the other 250 something million ones that i'll be doing so but years from now should you ever need new lenses i can have them programmed cut to the shape for when they arrive at your home and you can pop them in as i will demonstrate on how to do that i'm going to hit the start button the little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number. So if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. So I also want to put a disclaimer. I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I am a small independent lab. I'm not allowed. There's only, I've been told by my sales rep, there's only 10 companies that are allowed to sell that have been given permission to individually list, list every frame with prices from Oakley. Now, there's a million people out there doing it. I do not want to break any of the rules. I do my best to play by the rules. I am legit. I believe that something bad will come back. So I do what I'm told. So if anyone, but you are allowed to email me. 
If there's a frame that you want, email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. I will get you a price and the availability of each frame, and we will go from there. I'll be more than happy to do the work for you. So, that is the shape of the lens I'll be cutting. Let's move it on to the next screen. Your pupillary distance is 34. The computer starts at 32.5. The pupillary distance is where you're the width of your eyes in relation to the bridge so going outward you are 34 millimeters on your right lens actually that's your right lens that's your right lens going this way 34 millimeters um, from the center of your nose and you are 33 and a half millimeters going this way now i'm still going to take the optical center the vertical decentration into account so the optical center sits directly in front of your eye this blue cross is the geometric center of your frame and actually if i were to move your pupillary distance out that little orange crosshairs you will see that but you are almost dead center in there 34 it's just let's actually see so dead center is 34.5 that would be the geometric center of your frame your eye is going to be just above that at 19 millimeters oops let's go back to 34 now we're going to raise up the vertical and do the vertical decentration and put it at 19. so i'm going to change the layout screen this is for single vision i'm going to do a progressive lens and that's your left lens i'm assuming this is your right but it's not marked so let me mark this one as your right lens now if you guys don't know which is the right or left let me recap <laughs> oh that joke never gets old that's now your right lens because it has an r on there so the other thing is that the i've underlined the strength of the bifocal power the progressive every progressive has a little invisible well, they're not invisible, they're little laser engravings, two circles on the end, and then the power, this says 2.2, two, two, which means 2.25. I line up those dots over the dots on the layout chart, and that tells me the optical center. So, I have done that. I've removed the paint. They all come with initial paint on the lens that I removed beforehand, because I use a chemical, the all-off, to do that, and I like to remove it while it's, the lenses have not been installed. I do not like to use harmful chemicals anywhere near the frame itself. Now this is a block, or I like to call it Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens, so I'm going to get two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got two, yeah, that's twice I've said that now. I think I'm developing a, a habit. So I'm going to stick that on the first one, stick that on the second one. On the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side sticky, line up the magnet, and the reason why I have those dots on there, your optical center, and these two, which are four below the Essilor lenses, is a four drop. So those dots are going to be four millimeters below on, and 17 millimeters outward on each side. These are 34 millimeters apart. You don't believe me? Look at that. Something new for every video. 34 millimeters. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't, you can take my word for it. <laughs> been watching too much Billy Crystal lately. All right, so I'm lining that up. That goes there. The optical center would sit in front of your pupil. These other two dots go on this line. And I want to look at something. Look, look. Yeah, okay. Fairly high amount of astigmatism. I'll make sure those two dots are perfect. Even if you didn't have the two dots, I'm going to make sure they're perfect or high amounts of astigmatism. They're going to be perfect. So I'm going to take the lens that ain't right, which will be played by the left lens. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Bet you didn't know I could do that. you never seen that in a video. Okay, and yes, I do recommend coffee late in the day. Why do you ask? <laughs> Line up that magnet there. Pupillary distance for the left eye, 33.5. It's at 34, so I'm going to tap the minus button one time till we get there. Same optical center height. And line that up perfectly make those two make sure those two dots are on the line where they're supposed to be hit that button the arm comes down and places the block onto the left lens i'm so done with this machine right now moving on to this one this is the edger blocker tracer edger so that this is what cuts the lenses it costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy their own put it on your own kitchen counter and then you can cut your own lenses at home you won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel maybe that's why it costs forty thousand dollars it's got the bling but this is what's going to grind your lens material away from this size to this size 
Now once it's the correct size, this wheel in the center, that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel on the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So I'm going to wake up the computer, 1306. You don't see that? Look at my magnifier. 1306. Now can you see it? I can't tell. I can't see what you guys are seeing. So, 1306. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens. I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. Press that on there firmly. By the way, I special ordered these lenses to have the same curvature as the frame. As a professional licensed optician, I reserve the right to do that. And I reserve the right to do it perfectly, is what I should say. So now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there into the chuck. Say it with me, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Hit the green arrow to start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's tracing the shape of the right lens. And the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you will have none, if any, in this frame with your prescription. But I do cut prescription lenses all day long for free and higher powered. And that is a little bit more critical with the higher powered lenses. Now the light you see flickering in the background is water. That is there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Should this ever lens coat down and touch the cutting wheel. There we go. So. But polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens during the cutting cycle when it's on the cutting wheel. Now, plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex does cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of it on the cutting wheel. Now, water will spray onto this lens for the last 20 seconds, but only to wash away the optical debris that you may see beginning to form on the edge of the lenses now. And it will be on the bevel wheel, that wheel in the middle that's a little bit darker color. Not the one on the far right that's the darkest. That's the polishing wheel. It will never go onto that. Only that wheel in the middle. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lenses, the same lens materials that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. Speaking of protection, your lenses also have 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, there in St. Louis, Missouri, and this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. So your lens is now on the bevel wheel getting the knife-like edge. Very dull knife like myself, but knife-like edge nonetheless. Water has begun spraying onto the lens, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cycle. In just a moment, the little lever is going to come into view from the front of the, the foreground. Is that what it's called? At the end of that... Is a spinning disc that's what's going to apply the safety bevel is a very very fine grit and it's just going to smooth out the back surface of the lens should any portion of this lens come in contact with the cheek which it won't this can be nice and smooth again i cut some stronger prescriptions all day long for how much for free when you buy a frame for me free single vision lenses no matter how much the power now, having said that, you may want to upgrade to a high index, which is 30% thinner and lighter than polycarbonate. But that is not required. If you tell me you can't afford the upgrade, which is $60 to high index, you don't have to do it. So I'm going to run my thumbnail around to make sure all the optical sawdust is off the edge of the lens. The other reason I put a safety bevel on the back surface of the lens is now, as you see, I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, I'm going to press down at the nose and nasal area to see if it fits. And if it is too large, 
which I feel that it is. I don't want any rough surfaces of the lens to come in contact with the frame. So that's why I smooth everything out just for that part right there. I'm going to take this down one tenth of a millimeter. Don't believe me? One tenth, 0 0.10. Put this back in, hit the retouch button. Again, the old saying, you can always cut more off of a board. You can never add it back on. And don't be bored. You can always cut more off of a lens. You can never add it back on. I start a little large and work my way down. Now this time it's just going to go straight to the bevel wheel until I take a tenth of a millimeter off. For all of you people who slept through math, a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that off going around the circumference of the lens until it pops in there easily. One way to cheat is to apply heat to the frame. This is a $300 hair dryer. It doesn't need to be, but they don't sell a lot of them, only to optical shops. You can put that in there like that. Don't worry, I didn't have it in there that long. But it makes plastic more pliable and you can force the lens in there. I do not want to force the lens into your frame or any frame. It would cause the frame to stretch or what we in the industry called roll. If you can imagine your frame being a gutter, if your lens were too large, the force applied to the perimeter of the frame would cause the bottom of the frame to roll outward because that's the thinnest part of the frame. That's where it's going to happen. That's the weakest link in the chain. And it gives you an ugly cosmetic look as well as shortening the life of the frame. It's not going to happen at the thicker points, only the thinner points. Let's take that out. Dry everything off. And I'm going to do what is known as the cold mount. I know it sounds like a, a marital term when you've been married too long, but this is an optical term. This is the cold melt. <laughs> My wife tells me not to tell jokes like that because, you know, you don't, you can't tell what I'm really joking about. You can't see my facial expressions and I'm going to offend somebody. And it's true, I offended my wife um, every time I do the cold mountain talk about it. <laughs> but she's not here, so let her fend to herself. Um, use my thumbs, push down the nose. It still does not want to go in. So I'm going to take it down another tenth of a millimeter. Although, let me try one more thing. Hang on. I'm going to do a different technique. I'm going to push it in at the nose first, and then push down these edges. Nope, still ain't going in. I'm going to take it down another tenth of a millimeter. So now I'm at 0.20, one fifth. Press that back on there firmly, hit retouch. See, that's what I get for kidding around. I got to do more work. But uh, the, the right lens takes a little bit longer once we get the size right. I can flip that over, cut the left, and it'll go in there easily. And it'll just slide right in. Don't you like it when that happens? I know I do. Well, we are talking about optical terms, right? Okay, good. Just making sure we're on the same page. So, oh, I'm going to get some hate mail after this video. But it's, uh, it does take a little bit longer. And I'm sorry you guys have to put up with my bad humor as I stall and delay. And I believe uh, the cinematography term for it is stretch, make this thing last. But I do not apologize for making sure that every pair of lenses gets cut perfectly before I ship. That's the only thing perfect about me is my lab work. If you're good at what you do, you can joke around. If you have no idea what you're doing, you better act pretty damn professional to fool people. So, by the way, one thing about this frame, no screws. This hinge that is in there, I had an uh, orthopedic surgeon say that's the same way they're designing new knees when he does surgery. That's uh, really cool how it has gone from medical advancements into everyday life. They said if it works that well inside of a human, imagine how well it's going to work on the outside. So, try everything off again. Run my thumbnail around to make sure there's no optical sawdust. Tuck it in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, press down at the nose. Now, it, I did that cold snap. It went in there easily. Now, I'm on some Facebook groups and they hate the term snap. Oh, snap. What am I going to do about that? Flip that over to L. Put it in. Press the, the sticker on there firmly. Make sure the adhesion is really good. Line up the magnet into the chuck. 
the Charles, the Chucky baby, the Chuckster, the Chuckarama. Can I come up with a new name? The Chuckaroo. All right, come on. One more stretch. One more stretch. Say it with me. Chuck, uh, Chuck, Chuck, Chuckalicious. All right, let's get to work. Brent's been waiting for this. He's like, would you just get this done and mail them to me? He blind. He wants to see. Although he's got several pair of transitions extract him now. He's really wanting the green. Brett, you can get it with the green. You just can't get it with one of the six mirrors as of yet. You can get it with any of the Crizal coatings. If anyone else wants to learn more about Crizal coatings, you can go to Crizal, C-R-I-A-Z-L. Where is that? Hang on. You're supposed to get a Crizal cleaning cloth. You're going to get one. Well, C-R-I-Z-A-L, USA.com. And that will give you the breakdown of all the different coatings. Now, your lenses have an anti-glare coating on the back surface, but it is not Crizal. It is specifically, specifically designed to work with the mirror coatings. So again, lawyers got involved. You can't use Crizal. They have their own. Bureaucrats will tell you why there needs to be all this proprietary stuff, but uh, until then, I just want to work and uh, enjoy what I do. Give people as many options as possible and be quite honest with you. I love the fact they have the style mirrors now with the Transitions Extra Active Gray and Brown. I can't wait till it happens on green. Just think if you could have green on green. Put the sticker on there. We're going to come down here to my Marco 101 lensometer. Spin the fine tune knob to 163. That is the axis that corresponds with your astigmatism on your right eye. I'm going to put it in just above that black dot. Check the power and I'm getting, where's my flashlight? There it is. I've got a smaller flashlight, I just can't find it. I'm getting 175. We're at 0 0.51, 1 and a quarter, 150, 175, 2 in the black if you notice. Not the red, in the black. It's like a roulette wheel. It is like a wheel, but... So the unit of measurement we have in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R starting at zero and going up in quarter increments so you are on the seventh rung of a ladder you are you are farsighted you need seven steps of magnification to see things clearly you need another once everything is the correct size everything is much too small so you need seven steps of magnification that's why there is a plus sign things are magnified magnified now once everything is the correct size you need another five steps of astigmatism correction. So you have two curves on your eyes, a spherical curve, which either magnifies or minifies, an astigmatic curve, which is steeper, that takes away fuzzy edges. That's what uncorrected astigmatism does. It makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So we're gonna turn that fine two knob, turn that lens and those two powers to 163. A straight line is zero to 90 to 180. We're going to turn that fine tune knob to 163. So let's check the second curve on your lens. And we're ending up at plus 50, exactly halfway between 0 and 1. That's because if you had a dollar 75, if you were plus 175 and you subtracted 125, you would end up at plus 50. Plus 50 in the black. Now your left eye only needs six steps of farsighted correction and only three steps of astigmatism correction. And we're going to turn that fine two knob to 10. Now this first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. And here's another little learning moment, teaching moment. You would think 10 and 163 are very far apart. They're actually only seven digits apart. How's that, you say? So you're on the 10th meridian here, which is 10 degrees away from the 180. A straight line, 0 or 180 is the same number. That's why on the axis wheel... You go from 160, 170 to 0, and then back to 10 again. So you have 0 and 180 being the same number. You have 90 and 270 being the same number in a, on, a, on a round spherical wheel. And where was I at? So 10 degrees here away from the 180. 163 is 17 degrees away from the 180. So you ha your astigmatism is lined up here, and most people have it that way. That is with the rule. When it's at 90, that's called against the rule. Most people, when you blink, it is the shape of your eye as your eyelids compress downward. And here's another tip. When you blink, your eyes, your eyelids, which is your tarsal plate, how's that? You're gonna let, Brett, I'm giving you your money's worth in this one. 
You think your eyes come together in the middle like when you clap. No, it does not. Your top lid comes much farther over and your bottom eyelid moves ever so slightly. So essentially, your top lid comes and blinks that much. Your bottom lid is just there. So, but it is just there so cutely. You got to give it that. So let's come down here. Take this out. Now you have, I think, around about 150 eyelashes on the top and bottom, and they're there to protect you. Speaking of lashes, look at that. It looks like a little cilia. That's what your lashes are. So I'm going to run my thumbnail around. Look at that. I love it when it comes off in one big piece, like when you clean the lint trap in the dryer. Although, in full disclosure, I have not cleaned the lint trap in my dryer ever since I put one of these on. I know it's terrible, but I'm responsible for every spider in the house. So, you know, it's give and take. Do laundry every week and or rescue the occasional spider. I'll go for the spider. Now, once I have all the optical sawdust off and on the counter, I collect it neatly into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor. <laughs> kids, I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like this. So kids, if you want to grow up and make a mess on the job, you gotta stay in school. That's me nodding my head. You gotta stay in school. So, I'm going to tuck this in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, pressing out the nose. It snaps right in. The cold mount. Pop the block off. Pull the sticker off. Use my hand-approved drying method. Drop that in there. And let's see, where do I put the sticker this time? Ooh, I think I know. Look at that. My toupee is coming off. So I'm going to press that on there. Give that a little squeeze, my little mini me. The a year's worth. And now when I opened up the new lab when I moved here, started a new one. Come down here to the lensometer. I'm gonna put it in just above that black dot, which is your pupillary distance, and turn the fine tune knob to 10. Check the power, and I'm getting plus 150, exactly halfway between one and two. You have three steps of astigmatism correction. Let's check that second curve. We're at plus 75, one tick mark under one going towards zero. Because again, if you had a dollar 50 and someone borrowed 75 cents, you would have 75 cents left, 75 cents in the black, in your bank account. Now your pupillary distance, 34 and for the right eye, 33.5 for the left. For a total of 67.5, I'm going to place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. Then we hold it up to the left lens. It would be 67.5 if the actual white paint was still left on. Wait, hang on. Here we go. Let me get a newer one. 67.5. Exactly halfway between 67 and 68. I need to call them and tell me to send some more PD sticks. These are real PD sticks that they weren't. Could I do this? <laughs> oh, wait. The optical center height. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I just love what I do. Guys, it's the end of a long week. I'm going to spend the weekend with my wife. Look at that 19 millimeters to the bottom of the frame. Bottom of this part of the frame. Bottom of the lens where it mounts into the frame. 19 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Always good to do one more video before the weekend ends. Get another pair out. I take it to a different post office box I normally go to because I don't have Saturday pickup. My postal carrier comes to the my lab every day picks stuff up. Great guy. Really, really great guy. I'm, I don't understand how the post office gets so much bad publicity. Every time the people I work with, of course, they do get their glasses for me at the P.O. box. They, they text me. They let me know when I receive something. I get great service. If I need to find something, they're all on it. They come by. They pick up my stuff. They scan it. Of course, no pickup uh, on Saturday, so... Because I'm not here. So I'm actually going to take it to a P.O. box. Physically stand in line with your glasses, Brett. Hand it over the counter. Get a receipt and then take it home. File it away. You will get the tracking number. Of course, I print off all my labels while I'm here at work. Because I use PayPal. And PayPal lets me print off my labels. Then I go stand in line at the post office. And again, I use a softer cleaner to get around your frame and around the edges of the lens. I just want to use them the harsher one to take off the ink from the lensometer. Now I can use this to get all in these nooks and crannies right there around that lip, around the nose. Use my 
fingernails to get in there just get in there good sometimes you just got to get in there and clean like when your your ear itches you got to just get in there and scratch and rub and oh yeah those that feels good that's getting a job done so that's what your lenses look like clear now the blue flash mirror looks like a blue anti-glare on steroids i have crizal sapphire in mind oop look i'm wearing the oakley 8132 cross range switch in color look at this he's got color 05 i've got color actually wait is mine 04 i can't see with my glasses off um o2 i've got o2 universe blue now our fronts are about the same but i've got the the orange on the side to go with my blue orange i'm all about me some blue orange my hometown baseball team is blue orange that's why i wear those colors so slightly different color blue on the side but what i was going to say is i have crizal sapphire on my lenses the flash mirror is just a more pronounced version of that. Now, this is not Crizal coating. That's the mirror. Two different things, and you're about to see why. Now, I have the Transition Signature 7 lenses. You're getting the Transitions Extra Active. Let me bring this back down here to demonstrate. A clear lens, which truly is not all the way clear. It actually retains a little bit of color. All seeing is is getting light to the eyes. The more light, the better. No matter what material I... Is placed in front of the eyes glass plastic polycarbonate trivex a curtain they all block a certain amount of light now I have the let me get a cleaner one that's not wet and I can demonstrate a little better mostly clear lens at least the demo lens transition signature 7 I'm sorry extra active my see I got my glasses off I can't see and I can't hear and I don't listen but I don't think it has to do with glasses Transition Signature 7 retains about 3 to 5% hue while indoors. The extra active is about 5 to 7%. I don't know the math on this. I mathed wrong. I, I didn't know I was going to have to math. But that's the difference in the two. But wait till you see what happens when they get dark. They get much darker than the Signature 7. Now, if you want something as clear as possible and you don't need a mirror coating, you can go with the Transition Signature 7. If you're an active person or extra active person, hence the name of the lens, it's designed for extra active people and a little, or if you're light sensitive and that little bit of color retention doesn't bother you, go with the extra active. If you want something as clear as possible, well, get, get just a clear lens with anti-glare coating. But, um, but if you want, uh, you want the transitions, but you want them as clear as possible indoors, then get the Signature 7. You just can't have the mirrored. With the pros come the cons. But this is what, the first, what they look like the first time. Oh, by the way, let's get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. Hang on. Oop, hit the rewind button. Brr, rewind. The I'm old. It's actually a rewind button. Now it's all digital. But... When you get these in the mail, Brett, and of course free shipping anywhere in the U.S., but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side of these are going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Normally, in all my other glasses, these are called temp pilot temples because pilots, when they're in the cockpit wearing a hard helmet, cannot put a traditional pair of glasses that are curved over the ear. So these slide right on. Motorcycle helmet, baseball helmet, pilot's helmet, it does not matter. These will slide on over that. Normally, my glasses need adjusting, but it's almost self-correcting. I don't know how Oakley does it, but these glasses do not need to be adjusted. Every other pair of temples I have does. All right, so let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Yo! Flip that over, press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, that neither temple is askew or off like that. It's okay to apply that amount of force on there. Now, if these, oh, these do have spring hinges. How cool is that? There it is, there it is. Check the tension and make sure the tension is the same. But this is what the lenses look like clear. And I'm going to go ahead and activate them. But first, I also want to say that I send out a selfie request with every purchase. I would love to have two selfies. One with them clear, Brett. One with them outside. 
and with uh, showing the blue mirror if you don't mind doing that just to help demonstrate you can help help me to educate people like you've already done so far with the transitions extra active green and the green mirror that didn't happen you can make happen a selfie so even if you don't want to do the selfie find uh find a really hot chick and i know you have dozens of them around you and let them model for you it's uh these look much sexier on well i don't know i can't say that you may make these look sexy i do i can't say i ain't gonna but the um but i also send out cleaning instructions not only how to care for your frame and lenses but for the oakley um the oakley cleaning cloth that you're gonna have the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that i'm gonna provide in fact let me make sure that it works i field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works so when you get these in the mail and you see the wrinkle in them you know that it works and and i'm too cheap to take the one out of my pocket and use that so why why should i use mine when i can use yours why be difficult when i can be impossible as my wife says but uh, oh i'm sleeping on the couch tonight uh, but i'm gonna go ahead and activate them look at me hang on i'm running my mouth which means i'm exposed them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light and as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute, minute 15. Brett, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken the first couple weeks or exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time that my lenses, the Signature 7, won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. That's because your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. And that's why mine won't. Having said that, yours, the extra active, will get 30 to 50% dark behind a windshield. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they'll all darken. Now, the other time they won't work as well as it when it's below, um, when it's higher than 85 degrees. They're temperature sensitive. They'll get darker when it's 85 and below than it will when it's 95 and above. Now yours, the extra active, will get darker in hotter weather. Now, this time of year, all the lenses are going to get dark just because it's cold outside. It's just those dog days of summer. You're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. But this is the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, they're going to keep getting darker. Isn't that right, my YouTube follower? Come on, Brett, we talked about that. Don't you remember? <laughs> so I'm going to get a picture of his and mount it on the wall when I show people. That's the first time they've been activated. Don't worry. They will get darker. Now, when you look out, you're going to see the dark gray. When people look at you, they're going to see that mirror coating at just the right angle. It's not like a true mirror on sunglasses at every angle and every position. It has to be just right. This is new technology, but still really, really, really cool. So... But this is the first time, they're, as I keep yapping my mouth, they're going to get lighter and lighter, as will happen. And uh, the lenses and me running my mouth, that will happen too. But if you've liked what you've seen and you want to see more Oakley frames, Ray-Ban, Versace, Polo, Silhouette lenses, I'll be cutting more of those in the future. Um, as well as I picked up the BMW collection and some other ones you will see, but... You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. On Twitter as freerxlenses. But again, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see every video. You can, if you have any questions about what I can or cannot do, you can contact me on the contact me button of my website. Or you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Of course, I ask if someone does have a question go ahead and leave it in the comment section below that way someone else can read your question and learn from it they they may ask you know what colors are available and not and not think oh, hopefully I've covered all that but nonetheless you can always help someone else one email to me with a question helps you one email on the in the comment in the comment section below will help everyone who watches this video and reads the comments so you can see as this is turning back all the way by now, it's still got a little bit more to go, but it's done most of it. You can see how quickly it turns back to virtually clear. But thanks again for watching. Brett, thank you for your purchase. He contacted me, asked how much this frame would be with the lenses. I emailed him right back. I can also call you if you want me to. I, I talk much faster than I type. I promise you that. So... But you help support an independent little guy out there competing with the corporate giants. I do appreciate that. I appreciate the purchase of the Oakley 8138.
the chamber color 05 the universe blue in the 53 eye size and everyone else has got a chance to see how i bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you